In these class notes, we're going to continue to study application problems that can be solved using right triangles. Um, in, in these ones, however, um, sometimes we'll have to deal with situations where um, the quantity we're trying to find isn't necessarily itself the side of a right triangle, so we might have to get a little bit creative. All right, so we're going to look at uh, this first one here. Uh, a hot air balloon is rising vertically. Um, the angle of elevation of the balloon, um, and I should say this actually would make more sense if I said from, from a point on a level ground, 125 feet, from a spot on the ground directly below the balloon changes from 19.2 degrees to 31.7 degrees. How far to the nearest tenth of a foot does the balloon rise during this period? All right, so sometimes with these problems, a, a big part of the challenge is just getting the picture right. So what's happening here, right? So from a point on level ground, so here's our point on level ground that is 125 feet from this other point. So 125 feet between these. We've got an angle of elevation of 19.2 degrees, then of 31.7 degrees. And this point over here, remember, is the one that's directly below the balloon. So basically what's going on here is we have this balloon. At one point is somewhere like right here. And then at another point is like right there. And so we've got these two angles of elevation, right? So in that first instance, you can draw a line up to there. And then the second instance, we draw a line up to there. And so, uh, you know, we can label these angles here. So the first one on the, on the bottom, let me make that one red, this is 19.2 degrees. All right, but the other one, maybe I'll put in yellow, that one is 31.7 degrees. And then we know it's 125 feet from this point we're measuring these angles from to a point that's directly below the balloon. So in this, uh, in this period of time, right, the balloon is continuing to go up. And we are interested in this, and I'll call this Y. Right? We want to know what that length right there is. Now here's what I was talking about when I said that the side, the thing we're trying to find isn't necessarily the side of a right triangle. This here is not a right triangle. Nowhere in this triangle here is there a 90 degree. So um, what we should do is think about, okay, well, where can we see right triangles? Well, we can definitely see one if I drop a line down here and think about this triangle that has a 90 degree right there and this 19.2 degrees as this angle. So I can also think about this bigger triangle that has 31.7 degrees as its angle down here. So even though Y is what I'm interested in, I know that this side is important, so I might give it a name also, because they didn't tell me what it is. All right, so let's think, think about what we can say here. On the one hand, we can say that the tangent of 19.2 degrees has to be equal to the opposite of it, which is x, over the adjacent, which is 125. And then on the other hand, I can also say that the tangent of 31.7 degrees is equivalent to the opposite, but the opposite, of course, is both x and y together. So x plus y over 125. Now over here is y, that's what we want to know, but in order to know it we're going to have to find x. But of course we can solve this equation uh, for x without too much trouble. So we'll just go ahead and multiply by 125 on both sides. So that tells me that my x value is 125 times the tangent of 19.2 degrees. And so in this equation over here, then, we can go ahead and place this x value in there. So we know that the tangent of 31.7 degrees is equal to 125 
times the tangent of 19.2 degrees plus y, all divided by 125. But of course, to get y by itself, you know, I might start by getting rid of this fraction, multiplying by 125. So we have 125 tangent of 31.7 degrees is equal to 125 tangent 19.2 degrees plus y. And of course, all I have to do is subtract this number, it's a complicated looking number, but it's a number, from both sides, and there I get my answer. So 125 tangent of 31.7 degrees minus 125 times the tangent of 19.2 degrees is equal to my y. Uh, and then I can plug that into my calculator, and of course, remember, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Um, so if you get some kind of answer that doesn't really make a lot of sense, check to see if you're in the proper mode. But when you type that in, you should get 33.7 feet. So that's how much this balloon uh, uh, increased in elevation from this point here to that point there. All right, so let's take a look at another example. All right, so in example two, it says, uh, from the top of a lighthouse that is 250 feet above sea level, a plane is sighted overhead, and a ship is observed directly below the plane. The angle of elevation of the plane is 20 degrees, and the angle of depression of the ship is 15 degrees from the lighthouse, of course. So it wants to know uh, what the distance from the ship to the shore is. All right, so again, we gotta set up our, um, go ahead and set up our picture here. So we got our shore, right? And they tell us that this lighthouse is 250 feet above sea level. So, you know, I'll go ahead and make my, do this, and you know, I've got, and I'm not gonna be very detailed about this, but basically here's here's my lighthouse, okay? So maybe it's at, at the top of a cliff or something like that, but it's 250 uh, feet up, uh, and this is where I'm observing from. All right, now when we talk about angle of elevation and angle of depression, of course we're saying, let's, you know, kind of send out a horizontal here, and go either up or down from there. So this angle of elevation of 20 degrees means this, right? So I have this 20 degree angle right here. And then the angle of depression of 15 degrees means something, you know, kind of like this. So 15 degrees. And, uh, and clearly I didn't do a very good job with this picture because I need this to get down all the way to my uh, sea level. So, oh well, I went into the words here. But that's all right. So way up here above the words, here's my plane, right? And then here's my boat. All right, so they're asking us for the distance from the ship to the shore. So. They're asking us for this value here, okay? And the only other thing they tell us is that from the top of the lighthouse uh, to the sea level is 250 feet. So I can label this as 250 feet. So what we can see here is that uh, we know that, we know this angle, and we wanna know this x. But let's transfer some of these things, right? Like my x, of course, is the same as this side of both of these triangles, right? Both of these triangles are 90 degrees. All right, so uh, my 250 feet here also transfers over to here. So now I'm talking about this right triangle uh, that I that makes with the lighthouse and the boat um, that has a 15 degree angle. 
So I know we've got the opposite. We've got the adjacent to the 15 degree angle. So I know that the tangent of 15 degrees is going to equal 250 over x. And x is what they asked us for, right? So I want to solve for x here. So multiply by x on both sides. So x times the tangent of 15 degrees is equal to 250. And then, of course, dividing both sides by the tangent of 15 degrees is going to give my answer here. Uh, and then, so what do we have? 250 over the tangent of, of 15 is going to give me 933 feet. All right, now let's go down to part B. So part B is asking us, uh, what is the plane's height above the water? All right, so we've, we've got our picture there. So the, the plane's height above the water, um, back in our picture, is going to be the distance from the boat here all the way up to the plane. So how about down here? Just since it's hard for me to get them all on the same screen, let me draw a very rudimentary picture of what of what it is that we've got. So here's what we're working with, right? And so we already know that this here is 933. Um, we know that this here is 250. And they're asking us for uh, for this here, right? Uh, for the total from the water down here all the way up. Well, if I already know this is 250, then if I can just find this y that goes from here up to there, then I've got it, right? All right, so uh, we, of course, know that that's 20 degrees in there. So the tangent of 20 degrees has to equal the opposite over the adjacent, right? Um, which would be y over, well, 933. But here's what I would like to do. 933 is a rounded value, right? It's a rounded value that we came up with. And it's always better not to immediately jump to rounded values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it as x for the moment. So I'm going to put an x here, and I'm going to understand that, yes, this, this here is my x, and I found it by taking the uh, uh, 250, excuse me, I found it by taking 250 over tangent of 15. So when it comes time to make the calculation, I'll plug this in, because this is the exact version. right? But to get y by itself, no problem, we just multiply by x on the top and the bottom. And so we end up with x times the tangent of 20 degrees equals y. But in the last problem, we found out that x was that. So it'll be 250 over the tangent of 15 degrees times the tangent of 20 degrees. That's our y value. And when I plug all that into my calculator, what I get is 3. 39.6 feet. Now, let's not pat ourselves on the back yet. We just found this number, 339.6. That's great, but remember they asked for how high is the plane above the water. So we've got to add our 250 to this. So our answer is 250 plus 339.6, which is equal to 589.6 feet. All right, so then uh, another example here, uh, which actually is simpler um, from the, the standpoint of how many steps it's going to take us, but it's a really interesting problem. 
Um, so here's the scenario. It says when the moon is half full, when the moon is half full, uh, the earth, moon, and sun form a right angle. At the time the angle formed by the sun, earth, and moon is measured uh, to be, and actually there's a typo here that I forgot to fix. Um, it's Sorry, it's not 89.95 degrees. It is 89.85 degrees, so please make that change. So 89.85 degrees um, is this angle right here. 89.85 degrees. It says if the distance from the Earth to the Moon is 240,000 miles, estimate the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Okay, so if we just know how far we are to the Moon, we can get a good estimate for the distance to the Sun. And that's because we have a right triangle here. Okay, so we, we know that this is 240,000 miles. And what are we trying to find? We're trying to find this, right? Distance from the Earth to the Sun. So let's think about the relationship between these things. 240,000 is adjacent to my angle. X is the hypotenuse of my angle, right? So what trig function tells me about the uh, adjacent hypotenuse? That would have to be cosine. So what we know here is that the cosine of 89.85 degrees is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And so we can solve that, multiply by x on both sides. So we have x cosine of 89.85 85 degrees is equal to 240,000. But of course, the cosine of 89.85 degrees is just a number. And so what we get here is that x is approximately equal to 91,673,351.9 miles. And uh, just so you know, here's our actual distance. The actual is about 93.3 million. Okay, so we do a pretty good job uh, just with some basic trigonometry of estimating how close uh, our planet actually is to the sun. Now, of course, this all began because we knew this, right? The 240,000. We knew that uh, it was that far from the Earth to the moon. Okay, well, how do we know something like that? Well, this example gives us kind of a cool way of, of answering that question. So here an example for it says, uh, to find the distance to the sun as in the previous problem, we needed to know the distance to the moon. So here's a way to estimate that distance. When the moon is at its zenith, at point A, so highest point in the sky, it is observed to be at the horizon from point B. Okay, so two points on Earth, um, two different places on Earth, um, one looking at, at the moon on the zenith and one at the horizon. If points A and B are 6,155 miles apart and the radius of the Earth is 3,960 miles, okay, then let's find, first of all, the angle that's being made from the center of the Earth out to points A and B. Um, what is that angle that's being made? And then, before we do that, let's just show where we're going with this then we'll be able to estimate the distance from point A to the moon. Okay, so we'll see how that all works. So let's go ahead and label the parts of this um, that are going to be important. So it's 3,960 miles is our radius, right? So that would be this 
distance right here. And then 3,960 miles also is this distance right here. Okay. And then they told us that this yellow distance here is 6,155 miles. So let's think about what we know. We know this, which is a distance, but it's also an arc length of a circle. And we know the radius. So if we know arc length, we know radius, then that should lead us to some stuff we did earlier in the quarter. Right? S equals R theta. So we know S is 6,155. We know R is 3,960. And we're looking for theta. So that's a nice, easy thing to solve for. Okay, so, yes, theta is equal to 6,155 over 3,960. Um, but what I'd also ask you to think about is the fact that we know whenever we use this formula, theta must be in radians, right? So this answer here is in radians. So they did ask for it in degrees, so we can give that to them. We just have to do a conversion, right? So if we want degrees and we want to get rid of radians, we're going to go 180 over pi. And when we do that computation, we get about uh, 89.0544249898 degrees, right? Keeping tons of decimals there. All right, so we answered the first question, right? So now we know we know what the theta is, right? So how does that help us get the distance to the moon? Well, the distance to the moon, you can see, is this distance here, right? A, uh, well, uh, A all the way out. So we'll, let's go ahead and label that. Uh, we'll call that, right, our x. That's what we're trying to find. Okay, so with that picture in mind, estimate the distance from A to the moon. So we now know this angle. But guess what? This, this side of the right triangle that's been formed, we also know because it's the radius of the Earth. And so we're talking about the adjacent side and then once again the hypotenuse. So it turns out a lot like that last problem. So what we can say here, I'm going to write it up here at first, we can say that the cosine of theta must in fact be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is the 3960 plus x. Now, we know the angle here. We know it's 89.054 and so on degrees, um, but the, I like the radians because it is uh, nice and exact. So what we can do is we can just make sure that we go into radian mode and just put that in as our angle. All right, so here's what my what my work's going to look like down here. So we'll say that the cosine of 6155 over 3960 is equal to 3960 divided by 39 oops, 3960 plus x. All right, so we need to get this x out of the bottom of our fraction so we can multiply by 3960 plus x. And I'm not going to be in a big hurry to distribute that. I think the way that I kind of want to do this algebra is just to realize that the cosine of that particular radian measure is just a number, right? So you can divide by it, no problem. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide by the cosine of 6155 over 3960. I'm going to divide on both sides by that. And so what we get here 
we're starting to run out of space, is 3960 plus x is equal to 3960 over the cosine of 6,155 over 3960. And we'll subtract 3960 from both sides. And we'll get our, get our exact answer, but of course we're going to plug this in and get an approximation. And hopefully, you remember on the last problem they said is that the distance to the moon is around 240,000 miles. So if we plug that in our calculator, what we get is 236,001 mile. And, um, and just so you know, the actual is about 200, close to 239,000, 238,900 miles. So again, uh, with some pretty basic measurements, uh, we were able to get pretty darn close to the true uh, distance from the Earth to the moon.